Now then, we're back in the workshop. And in front of me, we have an Oregon electric chainsaw. Now, is it a, just a any old saw that's been badged? Has it got any good designs about it? I'm not sure. But, it's reasonably powerful. It's two and a half kilowatt, 2,400 watts. So it's plenty powerful enough and you know it might be useful and I tried it and it sounds like the brushes are uh, worn out so they're flaring now. Has the person who was using this got any brain? It's a useful question. If they haven't then they might very well have burnt the commutator out. If they have, then this might have just gone, started to flare and they stopped using it, in which case it just needs as a new, new brush. So, it'd be useful saw for uh, planking up. I could fit it onto some sort of frame and because it's two and a half kilowatt and I can adjust the chains for it to be a ripping chain then it could be quite a useful bit of kit but there are some weird features on it which I'm um, not very amused about. For instance, let's zoom down shall we? We have that nonsense. Yeah, supposedly the quick tension stuff which is a bit like, oh no, I hate that stuff. And then we have this, what I assume is red, this red lever, yeah, which is a, a sharpening lever. And it goes along with, and let me just get rid of the scabbard off this. So it goes along with this really weird chain. Where are we? Here we go. That is the depth gauge. That is the anti-kickback. And this is the cutter. And instead of sharpening on the gullet, you have a stone that sharpens on the top there. And the stone is inside the side case operated by that, um, that lever. And it's a bit odd, to say the least. And I wouldn't say these were sharp, but I wouldn't say they were really horrendously blunt. But I think they're probably fairly well worn. So there is no real clue. It's not as if these were absolutely um, hammered and blunt as anything and somebody's been trying to force this chainsaw to cut. But it just depends how uh, low these depth gauges are or whether the depth gauges are level with the cutters which could be a um, an indicator of um, a numpty operator so we're going to have to just check that but I'm not very enamoured of this sort of thing it's not as if you can get it really sharp yeah. so anyway there you go let's just zoom out of that So let's give it a go. All right. There we go. Uh, the sprocket doesn't look bad. And of course the bar doesn't look bad either. So, I know I should be uh, wearing gloves. Now, how does one... Oh, it just lifts off like that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there are some notches in that sprocket. 
but it's not like it's um no it's probably about half a mils worth of notch which according to some manufacturers is like oh it's absolutely worn out but it depends doesn't it anyway let's zoom down on this so there's the sprocket and here is the sharpening stone which I don't think we'll ever use again so we can remove that and put it to one side and it's as if the sharpening stone hasn't had that much wear on it so I'm starting to think that maybe this saw might be fixable and there's plenty of oil around everything I have to just inspect that and see if I can remove all this lot at some point but it's um it doesn't look like it's been totally abused which is probably a sort of good start right let's have a look at the motor okay so it looks like we've got four screws there's no end cover there's just that cover there so I'm going to undo those screws and then get back to you right they're undone and oh amazing it's a cover right do you know what I'm starting to be slightly impressed by this and back down there where are we down in there just see this little thing here it's a little gear operated oil pump brilliant so now zooming out hopefully we can undo these screws here yeah just there zoom in and uh, take the brushes out what does the commutator look like? just um, adjust the camera do you know what it doesn't look so bad it doesn't look so bad at all is it a direct drive to the sprocket? no it's not there's a gear intermediate gear So, let me just get a piece of wet and dry, or something like that. Zoom out a bit. Put a bit of wet and dry there. right doesn't look bad and um, of course the proof will be the pudding will be if the armature is the windings and the armature are blue but let's have the uh, brushes out and we'll uh, go from there so that's the cover which is just a flat strip and what do we find well that's not too bad okay and I'll just go and try the other side I mean what could have happened could have got damp one of the brushes could be sticking maybe left in a damp shed brushes stick it works all right for a while and then the brush doesn't move in so let's just see I'll try the other side it 
so there was a bit of pressure on the spring which is good and that brush looks not too bad come on get off do as you're told well, it won't want to right so is the commutator burnt I'm not too sure So I'm just looking down this hole here uh, for signs of blue or black wiring and it doesn't look that bad normally it really is quite horrible and burnt so have we got a case of sticking brushes hopefully you can see that it doesn't like look like anything and it doesn't like look like any particular set of windings is bad very strange I think the only thing to do would be to uh, clean clean the brush holders up get in there and just scrape them out just to make sure make sure that the brushes are free enough put it all back together don't put the cover on and uh, fire it up and see what happens right let me just do that just scrape that out just to make sure Just take a little bit off there, just to... They're reasonably sized brushes, but then you would hope they would be for a 2.4 kilowatt. That seems to be sliding quite nicely. Yeah. Uh, motor. It's not a super, super cheap put together thing. I've seen some really quite appalling engineering in some of these electric chainsaws. So, that just wants to be tightened up a bit more. I'm just going to do the other one and I will get back to you. Okay, those are those two back together, and um, it's plugged in. Nope, the, the armature's uh, gone, hasn't it? Well, that's a real crying shame. Yeah, and you can smell it. Never mind, it was a good idea and um, I think I will put all these bits in a box and um, just to uh, see if another one turns up I mean there are some nicest bits on this like for instance there's that aluminium casting there it's just not a bit of bent metal or it's not um, just plastic but that is definitely an armature that has met its maker Okay, worth a try. And just whilst we're here, let's have a look at this sharpening stone arrangement. There's a pivot there. Obviously the chain's coming round here. And you just pull that lever and this stone here rubs on the top of those chisel-like cutters. 
So sharpening a totally different point of the um, of the chain. Will this come off without? endangering anybody. There's obviously a ah yeah, we need to remove that there. There we go. There we go. As you can see, there's hardly any wear on that sharpening stone, but it could have had a new bar and chain and sharpening stone on a saw that had done quite a lot of work already. Yeah. And it feels like let me just have a look. Yeah, it feels like a two to one between the motor and this reduction. Is that right? Probably to increase the uh, the torque. So there you go. Yes, but no. Um, what's the chance of getting an armature for this? Um, and is it worth it? All those sorts of things. But interesting, I've never actually taken one of these saws apart with those weird chisel chains on them. Yeah, and this auto sharpening. Yeah, very weird. But um, there you go. Hopefully, you found it interesting. Um, comments, please. Yeah, because um, I take things apart for your interest. And uh, with that, I will catch up with you soon. Cheers for now.